everyone, welcome back to D's Nerds. I'm Michelle. I'm Chris. And today we're going to be ranking our top cinematic couples. So Chris and I got to talking one day about, you know, couples and movies that we thought were really awesome. And so he had the idea that we should actually rank our top cinematic couples. And so we each did a top five plus an honorable mention. Um, just talking about those couples that we just felt like were just absolutely amazing you know, unforgettable, had a great relationship, whatever. So, like, I for me personally, I kind of picked and said, which couples do whenever I see them on screen and see their interactions, I just smile and just that you almost feel like really comfortable and kind of almost warm feeling watching them on screen. So, that's kind of where I went, but also not doing like the cheesy romantic comedy thing either. So, yeah, but um, that, that's my personal way of, of ranking this. Yeah, I think part of it for me was that, but then I also tried to think of, like, how, you know, major this relationship really was for those characters. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you get, you know, kind of incidental relationships and things, too. Even though they're fun, they're not as, like, important to the story, so. I did make the, uh, I did tell you, and you laughed about this, but I said that the honorable, honorable mention should be Harley Quinn and the Breakfast Sandwich from Birds of Prey. <laughs> Yes, that was a pretty that was a pretty epic couple there. Yes, it was. It was a pretty epic love affair. That, <laughs> that ended, was a love affair. That ended in tragedy. We did, didn't it? Like <laughs> like your soul hurts when that thing gets falls on the ground. It's like it oh, does. oh it gets, I'm, I'm not over that yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the real thing about breakfast sandwiches. I, food in general. It's <laughs> it's a love affair. All right, so uh, I guess we'll start with my honorable mention. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a weird one because this is 100% not a romantic movie at all or set of movies. Um, so I went with Ben and Bev from It um, chapters one and two, technically, I suppose, because he's been in love with her since they were kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always thought their interactions as kids were really sweet. And then of course you finally get like the payoff for that when they're adults in chapter two. So I think that they're a good honorable mention. I always I, like them. You know, I, I did too. And that was one I did consider at some point. Um, uh, it didn't make, you know, any of my honorable mentions or ranks, but it does uh, like, yeah, it's a really great story. And you definitely get kind of the warm and fuzzies watching them, which is kind of weird when you're talking about an evil killer clown ghost spirit. And a pretty evil epic entity. horror movie. <laughs> yeah, and a pretty epic horror duology, actually. Yes. So, yeah, that's that's a great one, though. So for me, on my end, from the honorable mention, uh, you know, I really was just looking in some way, shape, or form. I was desperately trying to rank this in the top five, more out of obligation than anything else, because it has our, our, our wedding song in it. And I just felt like it had to be in the top five, but I really, I started looking at my top five, I was like, there's nothing I can bump. So it made the honorable mention, but it is The Wedding Singer. I mean, just for Grow Old With You alone, it is such a sweet song, but really, I mean, Robbie and Julia in this, they're just so cute together, and you spend the whole movie just going, just get together, you know, mm -hmm. like, her fiance is a complete jerk. And also just the the 80s setting is really great. Having Robbie be a you know wedding singer. Uh, and, of course, Adam Sandler is actually very talented musically. And so the song's in there. I mean, <laughs> the one, uh, <laughs> but it all was bull blank. <laughs> That's a great song in there, too. Uh, but this just overall is a great movie. And it's a really great comedy. And uh, I really wish I could have worked it in the top five, but I just couldn't. Yeah, it is, a, it is a good movie, and I do love it. It just didn't, like, stand out to me for mine. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now we're going to delve into our actual top five. So my top five pick, um, this isn't a very good indication of who I'm talking about exactly, but it's it's Han and Leia. Yep. <laughs> um, and they have, such a, they have a great relationship. Ultimately, I ended up ranking this one lower down for me just because the relationship does kind of you know, fall apart later on in the saga. Uh, but they are such a great compliment for each other, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, she he kind of um, brings her her stuffiness down a bit, and then she kind of brings the best out in him as far as, you know, his kind of more noble side, and I like that about them. Yeah, I do like their relationship a lot, and it is kind of a shame that it really doesn't work out for them. You know, you really root for them. But then again, it does kind of seem like in Star Wars that... Does anyone really ever have a happy ending in Star Wars? No. I think that's kind of a prerequisite, especially if you're a Skywalker. It's almost like you're doomed to 
some type of fate. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I do. I love their, uh, I love their back and forth. And <laughs> who are you calling Scruffy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Scruffy yeah. looking? Who's <laughs> Scruffy looking? That's right. Uh, but for me, my number five is Joe and Bill from Twister. I mean, we quote this movie all the time, every time we watch it. And they have that, they definitely have that bickering married couple thing down pat where Mm -hmm. they really love each other, but they really actually love to argue a lot too. I think they They love to bicker. They live to bicker. And even though like when you first meet them at the beginning of the movie, they're separated and they're divorcing. That's the whole reason for them to come back together is so Bill can get the paperwork to finalize the divorce. So he can get remarried. So he can get remarried and then brings his fiance, which is insane. But yeah, just wa- throughout that film, it's really amazing to watch them go back and forth and those interactions. You know, I am happy. I'm a happy person. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with the way things are going in my life. And obviously, I can quote this you know bit for bit. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's just such a great love story, and they are such a great couple on screen. And Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton just have chemistry, just exploding it's it's really it's really great and the secondary couple nobody talks about in that movie is helen hunt and her perfect hair she does have perfect hair in that it's really great and it never tangles and i want it Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right time for number four picks and in my number four pick i chose rick and evie from the mummy trilogy well yeah i guess trilogy but really the good evie's only in the first (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we don't we we don't count the third one. We don't talk about it. It doesn't exist. No. Um, yeah, Rick and Evie are so good together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's she's very you know nerdy and bookish, but has like this thirst for adventure, and he's very much the brawn of that couple. Mm-hmm. But they're so supportive of each other, and he's so good at like helping her do all of her amazing Egyptology things and all of her archaeology and stuff, and it's just very cool and. I, I like that they kind of have a really good rhythm with the adventures that they go on. They always seem to, like, get each other. Like, that is the definition of L-O-V-E love. They are devoted to each other very yes, much. Very much so. Mm-hmm. So, for me, my number four pick... <laughs> I mean, I've ne- I think out of all my five picks, this one definitely has a couple that is the most into each other. Oh, yeah. And that is Gomez and Morticia Adams. Hey yo! Come on! I mean, they are pawing at each other the all across both movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just and heaven forbid if Morticia if Morticia speaks French, like <laughs> Gomez just goes nuts. But I mean, you talk about two people that just completely love everything about the other. Like to each of them, the other has no flaws. And that is really cool in and of itself that, you know, two people can just legit be that into each other where it's not like you've been going out for a week and you've gotten past the, uh, the as my dad would say, the in heat stage. <laughs> the fact that they've been able to, to, you know, have a long marriage with multiple kids and still keep that fire burning, like, that is relationship goals. And they're able to have the uh, mother-in-law live with them and it doesn't tear the family apart. That's... <laughs> That's kind of a miracle, actually. All right, that brings us to our number three picks. And so my number three pick is Neo and Trinity from the Matrix trilogy. I kind of was surprised at this one. They are another couple. I mean, they come together in the first one, but I mean, you're talking about they're, they're also completely supportive of each other, and she will bust your face if you like get anywhere near messing with him at all and I feel like it's vice versa as well but I always feel like she gets more of the the bulldog thing going in that respect yeah I definitely feel like uh, in that relationship she's the muscle Mm -hmm. like he will defend her to the hilt but like she is almost maniacal about it yeah because he's like he's more about like the finesse and kind of like the big heroic moment but she's there to like okay something's going wrong I'm fixing it like this is she definitely jumps in without looking. Yes, yep. she definitely does, which is why they, I think they struggle so much. It's the third movie, I think it is, or yeah. third or second, where he keeps seeing the vision of her bad things happening to her, and it's because of essentially yeah. that. <laughs> but in, in the good news, and you know, if you haven't seen The Matrix Resurrections, then you know you can skip this part. But I mean, they do get a happy ending. They do. And part of me kind of wishes that is the last one because they they do get the nice, colorful, wonderful, happy ending. 
Yes, they do. And so, it was sweet. So with me, my third one, I guess I was just kind of going for cute because there is no other couple on this list of mine is cuter. <laughs> they are just adorable. Buddy and Jovi from Elf. I mean, them back you know, with me with Buddy, of course, he's basically, you know, he, he grew up as, he was raised as an elf. So, I mean, obviously, he's going to have that personality, duh. And But then Jovi, she starts off very cynical, you know, kind of almost very, almost depressing in a way. And he just brings out this different side of her and kind of gets her to believe in herself a little bit more. Because, like, she has a wonderful singing voice and she refuses to sing in public. And, you know, he actually tells you, you know, I think you have, you know, a wonderful singing voice. And it, just their, their back and forth, she really... I don't know. She she kind of grounds him a little bit, and mm -hmm. he brings out kind of more of the fun side in her. And they are just adorable. Like that whole like we were talking about this just before we started filming. But you know, like the you know you missed. Thing. Yeah, like he kisses her on the cheek when they're ice skating, and she's like, "You missed." It's like, "What? You missed?" And then she kisses him on the lips, and it's like, "Oh." It's like it is so adorable, <laughs> and you know they're they're just great. It's a great couple. Yeah, they're precious. All right, number two for me is. Danielle and Prince Henry from Ever After. Now, this is maybe a less familiar pick for some people. This is a Cinderella retelling, and I think the best that there will ever be, to be honest. It's a good one. Um, it is a phenomenal fairy tale retelling that takes all of the, the actual, like, magic out of it and grounds it in reality, and it just comes out so beautifully. And their relationship in this is so good. Um, she basically... On, upon first meeting him, rather than having this romantic ballroom moment, calls him out for being a total snob. <laughs> and then he's so fascinated that she talks back to him that he chases her down. And essentially that's kind of their how the relationship starts. So the ball for them is more like the latter half of the movie than the first half of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just such a great movie and they are a great couple. And she um, kind of brings out the the side of him where he finally starts to understand what it's like to not be royalty and uh, he begins to give her some confidence in who she is. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful story and I absolutely love it. That is a really good pick. I really like that one. Now on my end, now this is the only one that we kind of cross pollinated on our list, but uh, you know, it's, it's Rick and Evie for me. Number two, I just love how they have each other's back, how they, um, just absolutely support each other, are completely devoted to each other. And to another one that we see, like, in the second Mummy movie, like, as we know, being married and then having kids, sometimes it's hard to, you know, keep the, you know, the fires burning, so to speak, and keep the passion in a marriage, and they do quite well with that. Now, of course, they have it pretty easy, given that, you know, they're they're quite wealthy in the second one. Money always fixes a lot of problems. But it is nice to kind of see their back and forth. And really, I think what cemented their relationship, and in my mind, is in the second movie, When She Dies. And Spoiler how, alert! And, well, come on, that <laughs> movie's like 20 years old I by this know, point. I know. But, uh, oh, by the way, The Rock is there in really bad CGI. Have fun with that one, too, if you haven't seen it. Um, but When She Dies, and, you know, just his absolute, he is going to do everything he can to bring her back. And... And just that was so powerful to me at the end there. And also, when you were you kind of you in opposite to uh, what you know, the mummy, and I forget what you know, who is it, Nux on a Moon? Yeah. And you know, they're supposed to be this strong love story. And then when it really comes down to it, she runs and Evie doesn't. So, like, they're willing to risk it all. For each other and it's just it's a wonderful love story and then they went and they ruined it with the third one so whatever but i'm not counting that one <laughs> doesn't exist nope not at all so so now hey we're we're at number one aren't we we are so i'm come on let's hear it all right i went with a i went with a like heartbreaker at first that then turns into wonderful and it is steve rogers and peggy 
So they have, in this movie, such a tragic time because, of course, she thinks he dies and then he doesn't come back for, you know, how many years? Like, seven years? Seven years, years yeah. Um, and by that time, she's an old woman. And, but they continue to have, like, a relationship where he, you know, goes and sees her when she's sick and all of that kind of stuff. And then, of course, you know, you finally reach Endgame when they're doing all their time travel and stuff and he finally gets his moment to go back to her. And I thought that was so beautiful that rather than come back to the present, he decided to go and live his life with her. And then when the time came that that that, that was over, then he went back to yeah give you know to finish up the project, the the mission. Yeah, and yeah, that's that was really powerful. I remember at the end of uh, in in game yeah. where that all happened, and you're just like. Like, I'm almost bawling, like, at that point. It's like, oh, my gosh. But, yeah, that was that was really great. But I think my number one is definitely by far the, the Most cutest, the cutest, awesome, but yet so sad at the end. And it's, it's Carl and Ellie from Up. And the great, the interesting thing about this is that really what you see is maybe the first 10 minutes of the movie. And the fact that they went through and showed just this whole life that they built together. And then she dies. And then, of course, it, everything happens is kind of after her death. But that whole storyline is just so amazing. And it feels so dense. And you only get really about 8 to 10 minutes with it. Well, that was a long phone call, so my <laughs> bad guys. So anyway, I was talking about Up and didn't really have anything else to add to it except you know, just an amazing love story between Carl and Ellie. And it just, it makes you, like very few movies I really feel the need to cry during and this one was definitely one of them and I know I know you love this one as well you actually have a story to tell about the time you saw it in the theater yeah my mom and I went to see it when it came out and we saw it in the theater we really didn't have any expectations it was a Disney Pixar movie so we were like okay we're there we've loved all the other Disney Pixar movies and so we went and you sit through those first 10 or 15 minutes and we were just like this is horrible this is the saddest thing we've ever seen what are we watching <laughs> And of course, you know, it gets better after that, but it was just, it was so heartbreaking at the beginning. I mean, you don't see that coming in a kid, you know, it's kind of marketed as a kid's movie. Yeah. But it is like one of the best cinematic love stories of all time. It is. Yeah. And it's so sweet. Yeah. So, hey guys, that's our rankings. So we would love to hear yours. What's your, who, what's your top five cinematic couples of all time? And I think it's just perfectly in time for Valentine's Day too so you know, let us know in the comments oh and I would like to put in a disclaimer I didn't purposely did not choose bookish couples for this because it felt like cheating so I skipped like Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre and that stuff even though like I love those I just felt like they belonged more in book world so I just wanted to say that there you go so <laughs> all right guys well hey if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds please subscribe to our channel ring the bell icon so you know whenever we have new videos coming out we are also on on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So if you're missing us in between videos, you can follow us there. We would greatly appreciate that. Also, we have merch. So if you go down to the link down in our description, you can buy something there and that supports the channel. And thank you so very much if you choose to do that. So guys, until next time, have a very happy Valentine's Day. Find that special someone and give them a big smooch. Mwah! And uh, hey, until next time, I'm Chris. I'm Michelle. And we are D's Nerds. You guys have a great, safe rest of the day. Bye! Bye.